Welcome to another episode of Bill on Bikes. If I'm being really honest, I didn't even really intend to make a video today, this week, the past couple weeks. I'm so busy in the shop, but I find myself in a little bit of a uh, conundrum, as they say, a little bit of a pickle. And my issue is I had a 2009 Road King. Uh, I heard a little bit of a knock inside the primary and I immediately thought, well, this is an engine I built back in 2018, SNS 110 kit with the oil pump, uh, 585 gear drive cams. It has a Thunder Max, and we've already upgraded to the Screaming Eagle uh, front compensating sprocket system. And I thought possibly maybe the screw in the front had backed off, lost its torque. And I'm like, well, not that big of a deal. So, as you can see, and it, um, we got a lot of grime and stuff under here and I had to go further into this to find out what's going on because it wasn't the screw backed off. It wasn't anything to do with the compensator. You know, noise in these primaries tends to really travel. It echoes around. And I'm actually on the next bench. I have a 2022 Road Glide. And I'm going to show you some of the differences in the primary. And then even on the far end, I have a Fat Boy and I'm going to show you the difference in that primary for an older bike and just, just the differences that have uh, come along with Harley over the years and, and the reason they do certain things. So anyway, my issue is, and I'm gonna have to take this out and wash it after and get it all cleaned up, but now I have to find the noise. So what it ends up being is, you can listen to this, hopefully you can hear this. You hear that? Main shaft, the bearing on the other side is starting to deteriorate. I noticed when I drained the transmission oil, you can see some of that metal swirl in there. Um, you know, maybe the nut just started to back off and that's what caused the Baron to start to wear. But anyway, this should have zero end play. You would have sworn it was the front screw on the compensating uh, sprocket had backed off, but it hadn't. And these screws, just to show you, these are a one-time use. Now on the M8s, they don't specify that, but in these early ones, one time use, don't reuse them. They're cheap. They're, I don't even think they're seven bucks a piece or something. They're not very expensive. I always have a ton of them on the shelf. So why take a chance on having an issue? And that wasn't the issue. So uh, this one particular one gets torqued to 140 pounds for this 09 Road King. If we were talking the uh, M8 engine, it's around 175, 170 foot pounds of torque. So quite a bit more. They don't specify that you change the screw or bolt. Uh, the, the, the parts manual will call it a screw. I still call it a bolt. Uh, on the M8 models, I still only use them one time. You know, I have always considered these bolts, once they're torqued and you know, 140, on this particular year, year or to 170 on that year, that's a lot of torque. And these bolts take a stretch. And once that stretch has been put into the bolt, you don't tend to want to reuse it. That's same with rear sprocket bolts on the earlier bikes. Those are a one-time use. So um, certain things you have to look out for. This Screaming Eagle compensator, these are the springs. And here's the actual compensator here itself and the gear. Uh, this fits in like this. There's a bearing in here on the early one. So if you have a bike up to 06, they have the older style compensator. I have one over here to show you. Kind of built into the, into the rotor here. You could see you have this cup with the spring in here and you would load it this way. This gets torqued and the spring puts pressure on this and this helps absorb some of the impulses from the engine as it travels through the drivetrain. On real early bikes, if you have a, or you're even a new one and you're running really big cubic inches, I've actually seen, you know, sprocket shaft shear before because of pure torque. I mean, it's, it's uh, on the early bikes, it's not uncommon. This was okay with a stock engine uh, up to, you know, the, uh, you know, 1450s and the, uh, uh, 96 cubic inch uh, engines. But once Harley started getting bigger, they noticed this was failing. You'll also notice this cup is welded to the rotor. 
on the early, on the very early ones when this first came out, these were just screwed in from the back with these like uh, machine screws and they were just, they, they were coming apart all the time. So okay for a stock engine, but once Harley got into bigger cubic inches, it became an issue. In 2011 and later bikes, they all have the Screaming Eagle compensator, all the big twins. 2011 and later. Earlier bikes, if I build an engine, again, this is a 110. I'm running a Thunder Max. I had found with uh, the Thunder Max ECMs starting issues. And the starting issues were basically down to timing because the compensator would become weak and the Thunder Max is such a precise instrument, it needs very specific and accurate timing. And the timing was getting thrown off because these would would kind of shift, you know, when you get, you go to hit the starter button and sometimes they come up in the compression stroke or they'll kick back. That causes issue with starting. It's not as much with a stock ECM, almost not really noticeable, but with a, something like a Thunder Max, which is a very precise ECM, um, I, I personally really like them. I saw a lot of them here. Uh, it was an issue, so I would always have to upgrade to the Screaming Eagle compensator. But 2011 and later, they all have it. There was another issue too on the early Screaming Eagle compensators. Um, there were oiling issues. What would happen is when you get the real early ones, the, the bearing here was failing and it would be an issue um, because of lack of oil. What they did was, and I'm gonna grab something for you here. This is the primary cover and you'll notice when you get the kit, you're gonna see this little black piece of plastic here. Well, we epoxy these in here and this little clip helps hold it in place. And that helps as, as the primary chain rolls around and throws all the oil up here, gathers oil, and you can see, and it will drip the oil down onto the compensating unit. The ones without that had, had oiling issues. Now what Harley did on the newer models on the M8s, and I will take the camera over there and show you in a second, but they built this type of galley into the inner primary which actually takes the oil as it rotates around counterclockwise here in the primary chain and the clutch hub's throwing all the oil to the front. It goes down this lip that's in there and kind of a little spout and it drops it onto the top of the uh, compensating sprocket. That's how they fix that issue. Other issues in the primary, uh, we'll talk about that quickly. Harley had some issues with venting and, and the, on the M8 models, of course, as the engines get bigger, they're final, they, there were some oil, uh, I call it oil carryover issues. Again, this is the 09, so we didn't really have these issues, but over there on the M8, I'll show you in a minute. Um, you can, the way the primary vents, it vents through the transmission main shaft, goes through into the other side of the tranny, and then you have a vent tube on top of the transmission and that relieves the pressure. Well, they were finding that there, there was some more pressure in the M8 system and maybe some oil carryover issues. I've seen it go from primary to tranny, tranny to primary. So you, you might lose some oil in your tranny, it goes into the primary or vice versa. So to fix that, they actually came out with a primary vent kit. I have one here. This consists of a gasket, primary vent tube. You go actually up into the primary. That compressor always comes on at the most inopportune times. Anyway, primary vent kit that I was telling you about, 17 to 19 and only some of the bikes needed this, not all of them. You get a gasket, you get a template, uh, you get the new rubber vent, new gasket. Um, I've only had to do at really a couple of them. It's not that big of a deal. I know some people make a big deal about it. On the later ones, you can see it's actually built in here and it's already done for you. But normally what you'd be doing with the kit, you go in here, you drill the hole, you put your rubber vent in and it helps uh, the primary vent and takes, uh, really eliminates any chance of oil carryover between the transmission compartment and the, and the primary together. Screaming Eagle compensator, this screw or bolt, whatever you want to call it, 175 foot pounds. Again, the motor company doesn't specify one time use that I know of for these that I've seen, uh, at least that I didn't, I personally haven't seen in the service manual. I still change them anyway. I just, I just think it's good shop practice again, because it does take a stretch. And this bike's had uh, some clutch issues. And let's see, what else differences in the primary? Not really a lot. I mean, here's that uh, kind of scoop I was telling you about to drop the oil on, onto the compensator unit. 
really that's about it. There's not a, a huge difference. Um, there's some shape and design and obviously, but the basic part of it's still there. Now, one issue I have like on the 09, noise travels. Um, and on these later primaries, yes, they're, they're slightly thicker and they've eliminated the ribbing that used to be inside here. And the ribbing on the earlier primaries, and I'll take you over to that fat boy in a minute just to show you, but there's a bunch of ribs inside. A lot of guys think that's for strength. I think I've mentioned this before in some other videos. It's not for strength. It isn't really anything to do with strength. I'm sure it makes it stronger, but that's not the purpose. The purpose was the deadened sound. They were having issues uh, with bikes passing EPA noise emissions. Uh, the factory has to jump through a lot of hoops with the EPA, and it's not just actual exhaust sound, it's engine sound, what that engine actually produces. And one way that a very smart engineer came up with said, hey, we're going to put this ribbing inside here, and that breaks up the sound waves. And it did make them quite a bit quieter, because prior to that, you could really hear that primary chain whirling around in there and humming. It just it made a lot of noise. The new M8s are actually... Uh, they're just kind of quieter. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice setup. And that's another thing. And I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here, and I don't really like to rant, but maybe this is just a YouTube thing, but I follow certain guys, and I just, you know, check out, see what they have to say. And lately, there seems to be a lot of negativity just about Harley-Davidson Motor Company, it, you know, just the factory in general, management. And I don't know if these guys do this just to get, you know, hits on YouTube. Um, you know, I like to produce good stuff, and I hope that you like it. And if, and if you don't, I understand, but I'm not going to sit there and, and make up things. And, and I feel there are guys on there that are just ranting, and they put this kind of crazy headline or uh, into the thumbnail so, so you'll watch it. And I don't really understand all the negativity. They're always bashing the factory. This is a great motorcycle. I don't, my personal opinion, there isn't anything better. I love Harley-Davidson. They put a lot of thought, a lot of engineering into these bikes. Luckily, I still get to work with Harley engineers. I, I worked with, I, mean, I wasn't that long ago, I was with the Brembo engineers um, because of my forensics business. You know, I do product liability cases around, around the country on Harley Indian Victory Choppers. All my years experience, I've had accident reconstruction. Uh, <clears throat> I've been doing this a long time. And I am uh, privy to a lot of information that I can't say. I see documentation that I can't talk about. I have to sign non-disclosure agreements and stuff. But there's a lot of engineering that goes into these bikes. Now, is Harley always perfect? No. Do they make mistakes? Yes. Every single company on the planet makes mistakes. And if they do, they have to answer for that. And I get that. And that's part of what I do. I go and investigate what happened. And we go from there. But. Nobody, I don't think anybody does anything on purpose. As a matter of fact, I haven't ever seen that. I just, uh, I just feel there's some guys that are bashing the company for no reason. And, you know, I, well, how do you feel about it? You know, send me your comments. I'd, I'd love to know. And if you have some concerns or whatever, I'll gladly address them. And I'll gladly talk it out with you. I, I just, uh, I don't know. I just don't kind of get it. Maybe, maybe it's just the interwebs. I don't, I don't know. It's a little, maybe it's above my pay grade. Anyway, enough with the rant. Um, so, what I am going to do is show you the disassembly of the transmission. I got to get the first. I got to get outside, clean, power wash it. I got to cover everything up now because I wasn't prepared to do that. Anytime I'm going to do an engine or a tranny, and I know that's what I'm going to do, it gets power washed. This was kind of unexpected. I thought this was going to be an easy, you know, easy peasy hour job <laughs> and done. That's that's not the case now, and the customer doesn't even know yet. He's probably not going to be real happy, but. Uh, you know, it's kind of, things happen. Pieces go bad. I'm uh, going to get it cleaned up. We'll get it back on the bench and I will video the disassembly of the tranny. And then we'll, once we get that all done, we'll talk about that in uh, part two. So, and quickly before I go, let me just show you the ribbing uh, that I was talking to you about inside the primary of the early fat boy. Here's that ribbing I was telling you about. You see all these ribs that are built into the primary here? That's all the dead and sound. That's all that does. There's also ribbing. Uh, I don't have the primary cover because it's out being uh, powder coated, but there's, there's uh, these ribs built into that also. The very early Evos didn't have that and they were, they were quite loud as far as the primary goes. All right, so we're gonna get the transmission out and We'll show you what that looks like on this 09 Road King. We'll replace the bearings and whatever we need to do. Thanks for watching. 
I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you like us, subscribe to us on Facebook and on YouTube. And uh, I hope you enjoy the process of rebuilding this transmission and we'll see you in part two.